Years from now, I'll look back and remember today as the day I met him. I'll look back and remember the exact moment my life began to include him. I will remember it forever. Chapter 1. Cal Blair I wore a green tie-dyed t-shirt and jeans. My best friend, Bree Warren, arrived in a peasant shirt and a long black skirt down to her violet toenails. And of course, she looked beautiful and sophisticated. Hey, Junior! She greeted me with a hug, even though I'd just seen her the day before. See you in AP Calc, I told Janice, and met Bree halfway down the front steps. Hey, I said back. It's hot. It's supposed to be crisp on the first day of school. It wasn't even 8.30, but the early September sun was burning whitely, and the air felt muggy and still. Despite the weather, I felt excited, expectant. A whole new year was starting, and we were finally upperclassmen. Maybe in the Yukon Territory, Bree suggested. You look great. Thanks, I said, appreciating her diplomacy. You too. Bree looks like a model. She's tall, 5'9", and has a figure most girls would starve themselves for. Except Bree eats everything and thinks dieting is for lemmings. She has minky dark hair, and she usually gets styled in Manhattan, so it falls in perfect, tousled ways to the base of her neck. Whenever, wherever we go, people turn their heads to look at her. The thing about Bree is that she knows she's gorgeous, and she enjoys it. She doesn't shrug off compliments, or complain about her looks, or pretend she doesn't know what people are talking about. But she isn't exactly conceited, either. She just accepts what she looks like, and thinks it's cool. Bree glanced over my shoulder at Widow Vale High. The red brick walls and towel paladine windows portrayed its former incarnation as our town's courthouse. They didn't paint the woodwork. Again. Nope. My god, look at Raven Metzler, I said. She's got a tattoo. Raven's a senior, and the wildest girl in our school. She has dyed black hair, seven body piercings, that I can see anyway, and now a circle of flames tattooed around her belly button. She's amazing to look at, at least for me, ordinary girl, with my long, all one length, medium brown hair. I have dark eyes and a nose that would kindly be described as strong. Last year I grew four inches. So, I'm 5'6 now. I have broad shoulders and no hips, and I'm still waiting for the breast fairy to show up. Her mom must be so proud, I said cattily, but inside I admired her daring. What would it be like to care so little about what other people thought of you? I wonder what happens to her nose or stud when she sneezes, asked Bree, and I giggled. Raven nodded to Ethan Sharp, who already looked wasted at 8.30 in the morning. Chip Newton, who's absolutely brilliant in math, way better than me, and our school's most reliable dealer, gave Raven a sole handshake. Robbie Grukovich, my best friend after Bree, looked up and smiled at her. God, it's so weird to see Mary Kay here, said Bree, glancing around and running her fingers through her wind-tossed hair. Yeah, she'll fit right in, I said. My younger sister, Mary Kathleen, was headed toward the main building, laughing with a couple of her friends. Next to most of the freshmen, Mary Kay looked mature and together, with grown-up curves. Stuff just comes easily to Mary Kay. Her hip but not too hip clothes, her naturally pretty face, her good but not perfect grades, her wide circle of friends. She's a genuinely nice person and everyone adores her, even me. You can't help it with Mary Kay. Hey, baby, said Chris Holly loudly, coming up to Bree. Hey, Morgan, he said to me. Chris leaned down and gave Bree a quick kiss, which she caught on her lips. Hey, Chris, I said. Ready for school? Now I am, he said, giving Bree a lustful smile. Bree, Chris! Sharon Goodfine waved, gold bangles chinking on her wrists. Chris grabbed Bree's hand and pulled her toward Sharon and the other usuals, Jenna Ruzi, Matt Adler, Justin Barrett. Coming? Bree asked, falling behind. I made a wire face. No, thank you. Morgan, they like you fine, Bree said under her breath, reading my mind as she often did. She dropped Chris's hand, waiting for me while he went on ahead. It's okay. I need to talk to Tamara anyway. Bree knew I didn't feel comfortable in her click. She paused another moment. Okay. See you in homeroom? See ya. Bree began to turn away but stopped, her mouth dropping open like someone in Acting 101 doing dumbstruck. I turned and followed her gaze and saw a boy coming up the steps to her school. It was like in a movie, when everything goes into soft focus, everyone becomes silent, and time slows down while you figure out what you're looking at. It was just like that, watching Cal Blair come up the broad, worn front steps of Widowsville High. I didn't know then that he was Cal Blair, of course. 
Bree turned back to me, her eyes wide. Who is that? She mouthed. I shook my head. Without thinking, I put my palm to my chest to slow my heartbeat. The guy walked up to us with a calm confidence I envied. I was aware of heads turning. He smiled at us. It was like the sun coming out of the clouds. Is this the way to the principal's office? He asked. I'd seen look good looking guys before. Bree's boyfriend, Chris, in fact, is really good looking, but this guy was breathtaking. Raggedy bra black brown hair looked as if he'd hacked it himself. He had a perfect nose, beautiful olive skin, and riveting, ageless gold color eyes. It took me a second to realize he was speaking to us. I gazed at him stupidly, but Bree sparkled. Right through there and to the left, she said, <laughs> pointing to the nearest door. It's unusual for a transfer of a senior, isn't it? She asked, studying the piece of paper he held out to her. Yeah, the guy said. He gave a half smile. I'm Cal. Cal Blair. My mom and I just moved here. I'm Bree Warren, she gestured to me. And this is Morgan Rolands. I didn't move. I blinked a couple of times and tried to smile. Hi, I said in a near whisper, feeling like a five-year-old. I'm never good at talking to guys, and this time I felt so overwhelmed and shy that I couldn't function at all. I felt like I was trying to stand up in the gale. Are you two seniors? Cal asked. Juniors, Bree said apologetically. Too bad. We won't have classes together. Actually, you might have some with Morgan, Bree said with a cute, self-deprecating laugh. She's taking senior math and science. Cool. He said, smiling at me. Uh, I better check in. Nice meeting you. Thanks for your help. He turned and strode to the door. Bye, Bree said brightly. As soon as Cal passed through the wooden doors in the school building, Bree grabbed my arm. Morgan, that guy is a god, she squealed. He's going to school here. He'll be here all year. The next moment found us surrounded by Bree's friend. Who is he? Sharon asked eagerly, her dark hair brushing her shoulders. Suzanne Herbert jostled her, trying to get closer to Bree. Is he going to school here? Neil Norton asked. Is he straight? Justin Barlett wondered out loud. Justin's been out of the closet since seventh grade. I glanced at Chris. He was frowning. As Bree's friend reviewed the meager info, I stepped out of the crowd. I drifted to the entrance and put my hand on the heavy brass handle, swearing I could still feel the warmth from Cal's touch. A week passed, as usual. I felt a tingle in my chest as I walked into physics class and saw Cal there. He still looked like a miracle, sitting in a dinged-up wooden desk, a god in a mortal place. Today he was focusing his beam on Alessandra Spotford. It's like a harvest festival? Up in Kingdahook? I heard him asking her. Alessandra smiled and looked flustered. It's not till October, she explained. We get our pumpkins there every year. She tucked a curl behind her ear. I sat down and opened my notebook. In one week, Cal had become the most popular guy at my school. Forget popular, he was a celebrity. Even a lot of boys liked him, not Chris Holly or any other guy whose girlfriend was salivating over Cal, but most of the others. What about you, Morgan? He asked, turning to me. Have you been to the Harvest Festival? Casually, I flipped to the current chapter in our textbook and nodded, feeling a rush of giddiness at hearing him say my name. Pretty much everyone goes. There's not a lot else to do around here unless you go down to New York City and that's two hours away. Cal had spoken to me several times over the past week and each time it had gotten a little easier for me to reply to him. We had physics and calculus together every day. He turned his desk to fully face me, and I permitted myself a quick glance at him. I don't always trust myself to do this, not if I want my vocal cords to work. My throat tightened right on schedule. What was it about Cal that made me feel like this? Well, he was gorgeous, for one obvious thing. But it was more than that. He was different than other guys. I knew. When he looked at me, he really looked at me. He wasn't glancing around the room, checking for his buds, or trolling for prettier girls, or sneaking quick looks at my breasts, not that I have any. He wasn't self-conscious at all, and he wasn't keeping score socially the way everybody else does. He seemed to look at me or Tamara, who was in advanced classes too, with the same frank intensity and interest that he looked at Alessandra or Brie, or one of the other local goddesses. So what do you do here for fun the rest of the time? He asked me. I looked back down at my textbook. I wasn't used to this. Good-looking guys usually only talked to me when they wanted help on a homework assignment. I don't know, I said mildly. Hang out, talk to friends, go to movies. What kind of movies do you like? 
He leaned forward, as if I were the most interesting person in the world, and there was no one he would rather be talking to. His eyes never left my face. I hesitated, feeling awkward and tongue-tied. Anything. I like all kinds of movies. Really? Me too. You'll have to tell me which theaters to go to. I'm still learning my way around. Before I could agree or disagree, he smiled at me and turned to face the front room as Dr. Gonzalez walked in, thumped his heavy briefcase on his desk, and began to call roll. I wasn't the only person Cal was charming. He seemed to like everybody. He talked to everyone, sat by different people, tin show favorites. I knew at least four of Bree's friends who were dying to go out with him, and I hadn't heard of any success so far. I did know that Justin Bartlett had struck out, though. Hello, it's Jessie again. Thank you for listening to me read Chapter 1 of Book of Shadows from the Sweep series, written by Kate Tiernan. Um, it has been a pleasure, and I hope to see you for Chapter 2.